nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hi, <laughs> that took me like three times. Oh man, how are you all? Thanks for hanging in there. Um, so I schedule videos like for my guild, I scheduled them for the whole year. So there's something like 24 live sessions scheduled for the year. <clears throat> and then I scheduled all of my March live streams. So that's nine more. And sometimes the, um, the encoder, like the software is like, I'm sorry, you can't duplicate your stream key. Your stream key is like the key to being able to um, stream on YouTube. You have to request one. It's, it's super private. Like you wouldn't want anyone to, you, you don't want to leak it. It's like a password. And um, so it's like my key to stream. And it was like, no, 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 sorry. You have, you have duplicate stream keys. And it's like, yeah, but I'm not streaming anywhere else but here. And what happened was when I went live, it took the stream that I was supposed to do in my guild on Friday that got canceled because of the snow. It wanted, it really wanted to force it onto that stream. So by the way, that's deleted right now and I have to schedule that again. So yeah, it just didn't like that I, I went out of order and I never went live on Friday. So note, note to selves, right? So, and then I went, did it again and I did it again. So I had to delete a couple. So <laughs> now the joys of, uh, He's streaming, yeah, anyway, there's a lot of um, folks here. You guys have been all chatting. I wanna say hi to you all. So um, let me scroll way up to the top. Okay, here, hey Shem, hey Mullen, hey Susan, hey Carol, hi Elena, hi Adrian. Yeah, 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 I know exactly. No, you didn't miss anything. Um, yeah, and Amy, oh, yeah, I'm glad you stayed put. Hi Belinda, how's it going? Hi Aisha, hi Julie. <laughs> Hello? Exactly. Yeah, sometimes when you're really organized, it doesn't help at all, you know. <laughs> all right. Hey, Casey. Hey, Delwyn. Nice to see you. I'm so glad you guys made it through that whole hurricane thing. You must have power and internet again. Hey, Danny. <laughs> Hi, Ossie. How's it going? Hey, Martina. Nice to see you. It's been a while. Hi, Kimberly. Welcome. No sick kids. No, that's not allowed. <laughs> Hi, Heidi. Hi, Anna. Oh my goodness. You guys have been chatty. I, I love it. Hi, Nina. Welcome. Nice. Oh, that sounds nice. Nice and chill. Hi, Allie. How's it going? Welcome. All right. Well, um, I'm Sarami. If you are new here, uh, I live stream. Mostly I live stream here on YouTube, sewing, drafting, cutting, whatever. Um, I also have a community that all are welcome. It's free to join at uh, sosoguild.com. Um, and you'll see a lot of people in here are in the guild. That's why they're very familiar with each other. But all are welcome here. All abilities, all sizes, all people are welcome here. So um, thanks for coming. And if you noticed, I am also participating in So Frugal this year, which is put on by Ruin, of the, who is the Yorkshire Sewing Girl. 
and Sam, who is Frugalissima. And I think I linked them in the description. I'm pretty sure I did. And so the challenge is, and let me put up the cards because I put, oh, I don't think I, oh yeah, I did. Well, let's see how this card looks. I, Cause I was like all of a sudden like, oh shoot, I need to do this. Let me see here. Let's see. Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. I did check it. That's right. All right. So um, let's do this first. Okay. I know there's a lot on the screen. So let me just explain it a little bit. <laughs> so this month is so frugal, which means you use a free pattern or you can draft one that's allowed in the rules and you use fabric from your stash. You make your garment, you post it on the 31st. The top three images there are all the YouTubers in the sewing community that are participating who signed up. Um, today, you can head over to the Yorkshire Sewing Girl, and the Yorkshire Sew Girl, and she has a video. Most of these channels will be posting like what their plans are. Um, not technically like a how-to or giving you free patterns or anything like that, but let me show you this one here. So you see how the card on the, what CC is not working? Oh, it's not working? That's weird. It may be because I just went live too many times, Anna, sorry. It's, it's enabled though. Probably won't be available till after it's been processed. I don't know though. I do not turn that off for sure. Um, it may be because I have the latency a tiny bit lower, but that shouldn't affect it either. So anyway, um, all right, so on the left here, there's a free pattern you can only get this month. I just checked the sizing. It goes to about a 52 inch hip. So um, there's that. Um, there's also this 20% off pattern printing. I think this is UK based. So I'm gonna put this, the um, link to the skirt in the chat right now. And then I'll, I'll come back on the camera. Boop, boop. All right, and then I'm gonna show you is this it? Yep. Hi. <laughs> All right. So that sh the skirt, uh, the um, code is Frugal Florence, all caps, no spaces. Frugal Florence is the code for the skirt. I um, got it today. It looked successful. It did, was not emailed to me. I didn't check my spam folder. They may have it enabled to where they manually fulfill their orders because we Anyone who sells patterns had a crazy thing happen um, in last year at the end of the year where someone came and slurped up all of our patterns. So <clears throat> they may have turned that on or not, not or something. So just be patient. I'll check into it. All right. It's March also. Happy March. So I usually come out with a new calendar at the beginning of the month so you know what I'm making for the month on the live stream. I do a lot more than this. But um, here on YouTube, this is what I plan this month. I have this, I'm drafting a camisole today. I am a trained pattern drafter and, I, and I've been in the garment industry for over 30 years and I've been sewing for more than that. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to draft a camisole today using a t-shirt or a t-shirt pattern. Um, and then tomorrow I'm gonna sew it. And then Saturday I'm doing something, I have it just set on the calendar as like a sewing hangout and my graphic is really cute. It's, it, I made it sewing circle. And I don't usually just go live and hang out and sew. Um, I usually have a project, but I don't have a project for Saturday, so I thought I would just hang out and sew. You can just hang out and sew with me or just chat or whatever. Um, and then in two weeks, I stream every other week because the off weeks here, I do things in the guild. Um, so um, middle of the month, I'm doing the cropped jacket by assembly line. Let me show you, it's very cute. I have to do this. Yeah. Oh, I'm so clever sometimes. I love it. Okay. Um, crop jacket by the assembly line and I'm making it in that plaid you see in the picture. And then let's see, I have to do this and I have to do this. I'm also, these are my dorky drawings of myself because I just get really dorky and draw things like this. Um, I, the only thing I can draw well is clothing. I spent a lot of money in design school to learn how to draw and this is it. <laughs> this is all I got. <laughs> so um, I'm drafting one of these two tops. It's most likely the one on the left, the tucks, because I've been wanting a tuck blouse for so long. I have one and it's really old um, and I use the heck out of it and it's ready to wear and I just need to make my own, right? So um, I'm going to, in mine, which is right here actually, I'll show it to you, is sleeveless, it's April Cornell, 
Um, I will do tucks on the back. We don't do coffin sweaters around here. No. <laughs> uh, this is this one's really interesting in that there's actually no waist seam here. It's actually just flat, but the tucks release right here. So it looks like there's a ruffle. I'm probably going to put a ruffle on mine. I don't know though. This thing works really, really good. I actually love that it's sleeveless because I have a lot of hand knit sweaters and it's really nice to wear under cardigans and things. So it's not too hot because it's not very cold where I live. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I broke, I know exactly. That the so it's so abstract that that's April Cornell clothing though because I only ever thought of April Cornell as um, linens, table linens, <laughs> colorful table linens. So yeah. All right. I'm just checking up on ca uh, on chat, catching up on chat, not checking up on cats. That's actually what I was about to say. All right. So. Uh, this is a little t-shirt that literally should be replaced as well. Um, it's a self-drafted t-shirt. And you can tell it's it's very simple. It's not a traditional t-shirt, like a, a big oversized one. Um, this is the way I like my t-shirts to fit. And that's why I say pick a t-shirt that you really like, that you think could work well if it were just a camisole, right? You like the circumference of it and it feels nice when you put it on. Um, I put mine on and then I marked the top of where my bra sits. If you wear a bra and you have that kind of reference, it's really helpful. Otherwise, you can probably put your t-shirt on and put a few pins on where you think you would like the shape of your camisole to be and how high you want it to be. And if your t-shirt's like too large or something, pin it on the sides how big you want it in circumference. We're not gonna do like really technical drafting here. We're gonna keep this very simple and straightforward. And if you have scrap nip to try it on, I totally recommend that. Um, I, in the spirit of So Frugal, I am going to be using, I have quite some interesting fabrics here. <laughs> I, have, um, I have this blouse that never got sewed. Look at it. it's two cut pieces. Here's the the front and the back. <laughs> this was a client's project from when I used to do freelance pattern drafting a long time ago, and I never sewed it. Uh, they I don't know what happened and why because um, that was a really great client and we did a, I did a lot for them. Um, so I'm not sure why this never got cut and, or this never got sewn. Maybe they said, oh, forget it, we're not doing that. Um, so I don't remember what. <laughs> The sleeve is definitely gathered or something, but I'm going to use this as one of my camisoles because it's been sitting in my stash for a long, long time. And then I also have this linen knit. Have you guys ever sewn with linen knit? Because it's really delightful to wear, but man, talk about trying to put a storm in a teacup, man. This stuff is, it's kind of crazy. So I made a dress out of it and it became like the biggest like if something could be lumpy and be thin and drapey, this is it. Like it's, it was just this lifeless thing that got so stretched out. I knew this might happen, but I was in a hurry. It was just one of those things. Anytime I'm in a hurry, it's just never a good idea. But um, I bought this and then I just was like, I'm just gonna make a tank dress really, really quick. <laughs> Such a bad idea. So anyway, here's the skirt and I'm gonna turn it into a loose, linen knit camisole. I mean, it's pretty much see-through too. I don't know if you could see that it's, that it's see-through too, you know, like anyway, I love that it's going to be a see-through camisole. <laughs> um, I also have this knit that's left over from a project or I have this uh, lace that I planned on making something for like Valentine's Day. And I was gonna do like a project on the stream. I typically don't, I'm not a lace person, but I made a lace, uh, like a long lace tank top as kind of like a, a lingerie type of thing using this pattern here. And it's one of my favorite like lingerie types of things to wear because it's super comfortable. It's a t-shirt, but it's in lace, right? So but it's a t-shirt, so it's great. Um, so when I saw this on clearance at Hearts, I was like, okay, this isn't my first choice for a lace, like the color and everything, even though I love this color. 
so I'm gonna get it. I have enough here to make a t-shirt and a camisole, so I might use this. So this is, that's my plan. For this camisole, I'm going to also draft a shelf bra since everyone asked for that. I haven't done that in a long time, so we'll see how that goes. I know how to draft it uh, as far as fitting it to myself on the first try. We'll see. Um, I have some ideas. And then um, you can knit, or you can knit, you can um, sew yours with or without the shelf bra. I'm gonna be sewing two. Um, and I'm also going to be sewing this with, one of them with fold over elastic and one of them with self binding. So you're gonna have two options there. So, and if you just want to use a camisole pattern, you can do that. You do not have to draft your own. There's no rules here. This is what I'm doing because I really need some new camisoles and it's getting to be that time of year. So, all right. So here's my little t-shirt. Incidentally, I drafted this using the Moneta dress by Colette a long, long time ago. I took the bodice and turned it into a t-shirt because I loved the way it fit me. Um, and uh, here's where the top of my bra sits. All right, oh no, no, let's not lose that, please. Please. One camisole I've made before was reversible, reversible. No. What's the term if you want to wear it, you can wear it forwards or backwards? It's the same front and back. That's reversible too, but you would never use that. In the, in the clothing world, when we say reversible, we usually mean you can wear it inside out. That's so interesting. Welcome, Nicola. Oh, you just subscribed. Welcome, welcome. I don't know if you're watching live or not. <laughs> um, that's so funny. So I actually, I do like the fact that it's reversible, but I'm just going to be straight up with you guys. We aren't the same front and back. I don't know if you've noticed that. So it's really not the most, um, like, best case scenario for fitting something you like really well. And if you're going to put the shelf bra in there, you're probably going to fit that a little differently on the front than you would on the back. Okay. And the other, but the other positive thing about making it reversible, I'm trying to think of a good, better word for that, is that if you end up staining it, you can just flip it around. I had that happen once because uh, something in the laundry stained one of my camisoles. I got a crease down it, like an indigo crease down it. And I was like, wow, well, good thing this is reversible. So, but anyway, all right. I'm also very severely uh, sway backed, hip tilted. So um, I'm also going to probably accommodate that with the hem but I don't think I need to con you know, make you guys worry about that. All right, so here's my little scoop neck tee. So the first thing I'm gonna do, let's say you are using a actual t-shirt and not a pattern. I want you to fold your shirt and I want you to line up the side seam and I want you to be really precise about this, all right? The better thing to do is to do this inside out so you can see your seam allowances. And um, I can still see my little pins there. All right, let's turn it inside out. Stack your seam, seams, side seams. Symmetrical. But if you could say, if you said, and hi Fiona, if you said, oh, this one, this shirt's symmetrical, you wouldn't think you could wear it forwards and backwards, right? That's so interesting. Reversible. There's got to be a better term for that. The fact that that can mean two entirely different th things, but I would understand the meaning for both. How have I not, I've been doing this a long time. How have I never noticed that? <laughs> Mainly because <laughs> it just doesn't happen very often. You don't usually, and in fact, when I see a pattern that is, uh, you can wear forwards or backwards, I, I hate to say it, I am instantly in doubt of the uh, quality of the drafting. I, I mean, sometimes I wish my backside looked like my front side or vice versa, but not usually. Interchangeable, <laughs> rotatable. <laughs> like a tube top, <laughs> back to front. <laughs> I like interchangeable. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> when I think of interchangeable, I think of um, those books where you get to swap out 
the top portion of the person, the middle portion, and the bottom portion. Two and one. Oh, okay. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. All right, so I just also pinned my shoulders here. All right, and now we're gonna stack our armhole as well. And I usually like lift up the fabric and peek in there. You're stacking the seam, you know? So if there's seam allowances flipped one way, you're on one piece and the seam allowance is flipped the other way on the other, on the other side, th that's not what you're going by. You're going by where the seam is. Palindrome clothing. <laughs> hey, Donna. Choose your own adventure shirt. <laughs> the animal books, exactly. <laughs> Wait, what's the day? Okay, wait, wait, wait. What's the day in school, you know, when kids get to wear their clothes backwards? What's that called? What do they call that? They have a term for that. <laughs> this, I, you know what? I just love the world of clothing so much. There, there's just, there's always something new. Wacky Wednesday, okay. <laughs> Backwards day, yeah, yeah, that's what exactly. I was gonna say Freaky Friday. Backwards day, Wacky Wednesday. Okay, so now that I have this pretty much uh, pinned, if you're, if you're copying any garment, by the way, this is the first thing I do. I always um, fold it like this so that you have your center front fold, your back fold. Maybe this was a front opening if you're, doing, you're trying to copy a button down shirt. I always very precisely line up all these seams. Oh, you know what? I do not know why I just did the armhole. The, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The armhole. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. How's it going? Ooh, I just want to take a note to pat myself on the back. Look at how good I cut this knit and sewed it. Look at it. It's flat. We all know how much of a pain that is, right? Okay, now we're going to pin our fold. Just trust me, just pin all this stuff. It's, you just don't want to worry or wonder. And you know, a half inch off and knit is a lot. All right, now we'll do this one here. This thing is, <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed by this shirt. It looks so dingy here on my table. <laughs> I really need more of this. This knit is so yummy too. I don't know where it came from, but it's really nice. I use the heck out of this little shirt. I wear it under things all the time. No one ever sees it either. Crisscross, oh! Okay, if I said you can wear this shirt crisscross. I don't know you guys. These are the, the hard-hitting topics we think about around here. All right, uh, make sure you know which one your front is and when you, which one is your back. Um, if you need to do something like use a different color pin to indicate that, or you could put two pins on the back for like two notches type of thing. So there we go. So now we have our shirt. And so um, this is, if you're doing the route of copying an existing garment, and now you're going to line this up on your paper. I'm going to use a pattern piece to draft mine, but I would line this up, get that fold right on there, right? Don't pull too much. I'd weight it down just like this. And if you have a tracing wheel, great. The kind that's like a needle point sharp one. It looks like this right here. A little, little deadly weapon, deadly for the paper. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can use, you know, a stout needle or pin. And, you know, once you have this all laid out here and, you know, just be methodical, just take the time. Like this is going to go so fast that just, you should just take the time to set it up. All projects are mostly set up and clean up, right? And so when you get to these really awkward spots, like your armhole, anytime you're copying something, we don't technically need this to be very detailed for a camisole, but we do want some references. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this shirt pull up this way. I'm going to try not to distort my side seam, right? We're going to get our weight right on there. And I'm really gentle. I'm kind of just like lifting up the shirt, getting that nice and flat. Same thing here. Pull this over, same like this. And I just do that. I just kind of, you can see it's kind of folding over like this because I'm trying to get that shoulder nice and flat. 
And then that way I get this front nice and flat on here. My paper's not big enough because I have it set for a camisole. And then I would take that pin, you know, put your um, weights down if you need to. And then I would poke into the paper that perimeter the best you can. Is it less accurate for slinky fabrics? Only if you're less accurate, I guess. I mean, slinky fabrics are gonna be hard to use, but if you pin it accurately, the, what you're gonna find if you're trying to copy ready to wear is that a lot of things, especially if they were budget items that you bought, um, or you know, like, like knits nowadays are just budget items to begin with, sometimes you'll find that they're asymmetrical when you get them, and you're gonna have to do your best to fold it I guarantee that most people who take a t-shirt and fold it and pin it like this, they're not gonna get a nice flat front right here. It's going to pull or do something funky. You're gonna have torque lines and you're gonna have to do the best you can. So what I usually do is make sure I have the middle of the bottom and the middle of the top and I try and find a point of reference here and then maybe it's doing this everywhere else. You'll know what I mean if you have that kind of shirt. You're just gonna have to do your best and at least when you cut and sew yours, you're not gonna have that problem because you're gonna be able to control this and you can cut it on grain and use fabric that doesn't shrink um, a little bit crazy, right? <clears throat> so, I'm surprised R-E-S. <laughs> oh, it's Seuss so Week, exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, Fiona. <laughs> oh, elementary school. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the lingo. All right, so that's what I would do, you know, and, and you know, like uh, around your neckline, you can use your tracing wheel or you can just use a pencil, you know. So when you're trying to, you know, you know people call this rub off or knock off a piece of clothing, um, you just need to be consistent in how you trace it off. So if you decide to use the finished garment that you trace off, stick to the finished garment all the way around the piece. So use the finished hem, use the seam line at the armhole, shoulder, side seam, use the finished edge of the neck. If you decide to trace it with the seam allowance and the hem allowance, be consistent in all those places. I recommend not including seam allowances and hem allowances, just doing the pure pattern without it because it'll be a lot easier and a lot more flexible so you can make some changes and then add whatever you want on it because most likely the seam allowances that are on the finished garment, they aren't the full seam allowance. Like this little quarter inch seam, I'd use three eighths on knit and I'd trim a little for my serger. So I like, I like having that option and um, I, just would like to add the hem allowance or hem or the uh, treatment for the, the neckline, right? All right, so that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna and just poke around, do your best, but be methodical and consistent and then flip it over, get another piece of paper and do your back. So, all right. So that's in a nutshell, how to quickly trace off a garment without ruining it. All right. So now we're gonna use Originally, when I kind of said, hey, I'm going to teach you guys how to do this if you want. <laughs> now we can go. Um, I said, you know, use a t-shirt pattern you already have. And, I, and the reason I say that is because you most likely have sewn the t-shirt and you can use it as a point of reference, right? You can go, okay, I like this t-shirt except I don't like this or I do like that and I really want to continue it on to the camisole. So this is the t-shirt that I made from this pattern. It looks like I have shortened the shirt a little bit. More likely, the shirt's just shrank a little bit over time because this is bigger than the hem allowance I have here. And that seems very likely just because you knit, knits are just like very unreliable, you know? They're very, uh, they're not the strongest fabric, are they? All right, so we have our pattern piece and I'm going to tr trace off my, my, my paper is kind of kind of short. I'm gonna trace off my um, pattern piece here. I was really skimpy on my paper. I'm gonna do Manila today because I'm thinking it's a little more visible. And um, 
I want a permanent pattern, but I'm going to tone down the brightness and zoom it in a little bit right now. Unless you're telling me, unless you tell me that you, you don't want that, but I feel like it looks a little bright to me. So we're just going to do this and we're going to, where's the zoom? There it is. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'm also gonna use Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing. I don't usually use Sharpie. All right, so here is my pattern and I shouldn't have shorted myself the paper there. So what I'm gonna do right now is lay this on here and find where that little point is that I pinned. I don't know if you can see it right there. When the shirt was right side out, I pinned that little point where my strap of my bra is. I, I often wear a bra under my camisoles because they don't have a shelf bra and um, because I, I'm not a big fan of shelf bras. So let's see, what do I wanna do? I'll just use my tracing wheel. So I'm just gonna make a little crisscross right there. And now I'm gonna transfer that to the pattern below. I'm just gonna use a pin. Cause my, I'm not gonna use a pin because pins, um, basically they just, they are, I was gonna say something slightly vulgar. <laughs> they suck, they kinda suck these days. So we're gonna get my all out. And we're gonna find that juncture. And I used, I used to have like a little thing where I would go like that to transfer my dot. There it is right there. Okay. So you can see I have my little marking there and we're gonna just make it more visible. So there's our front. Now let's trace off our back. Hi Sue, how's it going? All right, so here's our back. these outside here. Uh, I, I uh, always draft my patterns exactly the same way, but you can do whatever you want. And that, and that is that I make my front a right front and my back a right back. And then this is how they would look, right? So this is the front and this is the back. I always do it so that they would sew together on the table. You know, the side seams are gonna face each other. And then I have a complete right half of the body or a left half of the body. Um, so if you're ever watching me draft, this is always the front and this is always the back, just so you don't get lost in the sauce there. All right, so for this little point here, now we just need to determine like, okay, how low do we want it? So if here is my, my bra strap, I don't like my camisoles to be too low from there, from, from this point down. Um, it, it's, yep, exactly. It's the juncture where the strap sews to the bra itself. So if you don't wear a bra or you like to wear camisoles and you don't wear a bra, you're going to have to try and figure this out a little bit. And what I would do is maybe pin on your shirt, look in the mirror and try and imagine that fabric not being there and, and kind of get an idea, like, do I like this? Does it feel good? And remember, it's gonna have elastic, so it's gonna have a little bit more body along that edge there. It won't feel so loose there, so. All right, so um, this distance here, so what I can do is, let's mark this on me. I'm trying to do all of this without using things like my, I have a dress form over there. That's a, that's a custom dress form. I'm trying to use only what I think most people will have on hand, right? You have you and you usually have one t-shirt 
at your disposal, whether it's one you've bought or, and sewn, uh, like that is sewn, or one that you've made, right, with a pattern. So if you have a pattern, it's a little easier because you don't have to do all the drafting from scratch. But if you are copying something that you already have, at least you have the reassurance that you know what to expect from it. All right, so here's my pins here. I don't have a mirror over here. Let's put the full screen on so I can see a full, <laughs> I can look in the mirror. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put the, sorry, I'm whacking the uh, microphone. I'm gonna put my ruler, this is very disconcerting right here. Okay, going across, connecting those two points. And actually, I think that two inches would actually be about right, maybe a quarter inch below this mark. I'm just trying, what I'm trying to do is establish a line between these two points and figure out how much from the top of that line straight down at center front, I want this to dip, that's all. So that's the only thing I'm doing. I'm trying to get a, a right angle here. So if I put draw a straight line between these two points at the top of the camisole where the straps are gonna join, and I go straight down the center front from that point, that gives me where I want that center front neckline to end. So, and my ruler is two inches wide. I think I'm gonna go two and a quarter. All right. Hopefully my microphone was working on that because I didn't check. So now I have my ruler here. Get this one. And I'm gonna make a, a right angle and I'm just gonna use a pencil this time. Well, I'll, I'll use a red, I'll use a red marker. Yeah, you're always looking for point of references that are constants. So if you've been here before, you know that I talk a lot about zero, zero points and things like that. And basically you just want that constant. So something that you have as a point of reference that's not gonna change no matter what. And that point on almost all garments is your center front neck, right there. That is the point. So if you were grading this pattern and doing a bunch of sizes, that point doesn't change. Everything changes from that point out. You can't grade this point and grade the bottom point without negating some of the grade that you applied here. So you have to have that one point that's zero, zero. And that for me is always the center front neck. And that is one thing I see even in home sewing patterns that stays pretty constant is that the center front or the center back neck is that one constant point. All right, so we're gonna draw a perpendicular line here to the center front fold, all right? And we know that I want this about two and a quarter inches below that point right here. And unsurprisingly, this is roughly lower than my armhole. That makes a, a little sense because this armhole is really high on me. I like a really high armhole on all my shirts so that I have most of the most uh, range of motion that I can get. So now we can fill this in so we can decide what kind of shape we want here. Like this, so I can just fill this in. I don't usually use Sharpie. I can use a ruler. like this but you want a center or I mean a, a right angle right here at center front and now we can take our point use any ruler you want and draft it in there and then as far as the side seam here I could keep this really high up or I could drop it down a little bit um, you know, if I were to try on my shirt, I could have found where does my bra hit the side seam. So if you still haven't gotten to that point or you, this point here and you're trying on your shirt and you want to do this, that's another point as a good reference is where on your side seam does your bra hit. Pin that on both sides so you can get the most symmetrical, uh, you know, point and then at least your camisole can at least cover that. So let's see here, I'm gonna go down to about right here. Just like that. All right, so here we have 
this camisole. Now, if you're using fold over elastic on this edge, you don't need a seam allowance. No, um, no, that's a great question, Allie. Um, the center front neck, are you doing this from nothing? Because for me, I am, I already have the center front neck right here of my pattern piece, right? <laughs> so I already, I'm just reading, I'm her comment, I'm not laughing at you. Um, so here is the center front neck of the pattern. So on the person, that point right here on you, that can be where you want it to be. So if we were talking about a pattern that was like a sloper or a block and you wanted to cover, you know, have that kind of um, pattern that you could draft anything from, then you can determine where your, your like baseline center front neck is. But because we're using a pattern that already exists, we're going to use the center front neck of the pattern. And because I had this little camisole point, like, okay, I know this is my bra point. I knew I had that as a point of reference. I went straight across and straight down, and that is my neckline. You're using a crew neck tee. So yeah, so you need to, to just establish where you want those points to be, and then draw a straight line across. And from that straight line, straight down at the center, that's gonna be your neckline now. So in other words, the neckline is, is unique to each pattern. On you, yeah, you could consider it that little bony part right there where your clavicle is. Clavicle, right? <laughs> they don't teach you anatomy in fashion school. <laughs> they, they could though. <laughs> um, so yeah, so right, yeah, technically, yeah, on a, on a sloper or some, a block, you know, like, on you, that's your neckline. I use two and a quarter down from my, yeah, from there, from this point on me, right? Here's my, here's my, my strap height to establish my center front neck. Exactly. I didn't go two and a quarter down from the neckline on the pattern. I went straight down from this strap point. But the thing is, Allie, if you uh, to put your t-shirt on, your, your crew neck shirt, and your crew neck is up there, because crew necks are pretty high, right? You could say, oh, I want this neckline to be um, three and a half inches down at that point. So that is fine. You can say that and then see where you want this point at the camisole for the straps. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, I don't want to confuse that. <laughs> Maybe, Nina. They should teach size inclusivity. <laughs> That's what they should teach. <laughs> they should start there. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Here's my camisole right there. This looks a little high to me compared to here, or maybe this looks a little bit low, but when you're drafting something, please do not think that this is going to be perfect from your very first one. We're trying for perfect. We're trying for exactly what we want. And we're trying to remove all of the variables we can. But this is going to be a really great test. Like, do I like this? Do I want this way? Um, what changes would I make? So I do have some scrap knit I could use. All right. So now let's go to our back here. I'm so, I'm so tempted to raise this up because I, I would rather have more coverage than not. Hmm, do I want to do that? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. All right, so now here's our side seam, right? So I'm going to cut this. Well, let's see. I'll, maybe I'll raise this up because I can always lower it, right? So let's raise this up just a little bit because I, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. This is why I don't use Sharpie. Mm. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cut this out so I can use it. Where's my stapler? 
So when you're cutting a uh, paper, you should always staple it together first. So you get a nice symmetrical fold. I, I cut full pattern pieces out because they're more accurate. All right. Now you want a nice transition here at the underarm. We'll talk about that in just a second. I just naturally put a right angle there. Oh, and let's talk about how the way you want it to fit. I didn't really mention that because I know how I want mine to fit and I don't want mine to be really tight. But let's say you wanted a, a compression camisole. You wanted something really, really snug because of the garments that you wear it under, you want it to um, not get caught on the fabric above it. Because sometimes I don't want to, like on the weekends, I don't want to wear a bra, I just want to wear a camisole, but I also don't really want it to grab the outer, the outer garment that I'm wearing on top of it, <laughs> the outer garment, and I don't want it to shift or ride up. Because you know how sometimes your, gar your undergarment will start like doing the shimmy, shimmy, cocoa pop up your body, you know, we don't really want that. So if you want to take out some of the circumference and make it a little snugger, I would do that right here at the side seam. And if you want, you can take your chest measurement. It depends on the knit. So I'm, I'm going to say this, but I don't want you to take it as like the absolute, right? Your knit fabric will vary very widely in how much it stretches. So I'm going to make this with no negative ease and no positive ease. It's just gonna be me. I like this because if the fabric's stretchy, it will feel kind of loose on me, even though it's going to be next to skin. Um, if I wear it with something that doesn't stretch very much, it'll feel firmer even though it's still, it's just next to skin. I like this, it, I don't really care for really tight garments. If you have a really, really uh, stretchy fabric and you want this to be snug, you're gonna have to remove some of the ease if you don't want it to get too baggy. Um, and that's just gonna be depending on what you want. So let's say you took out, let's say you took out one inch of ease on each side. That's two inches in circumference. You're only going to remove a half inch from each side seam in order to do this. And that's, that's two inches of negative ease. That's about the max you're gonna to wanna to start with. If anything, you're probably gonna to wanna to go, like if you're doing compression, it's gonna be a lot more than that and you're just gonna to have to experiment with that. And what I would do is use your knit fabric. You know, take your knit fabric. Let's see if I can, this is actual fabric. You could put it around you what I would do is I would measure on the fabric your circumference, all right? And once you have that measurement marked on your fabric, you're gonna put that up to you. So let's just say I did that, right? And so I'm putting this up to me at that amount. Now I can go, all right, how much tighter do I want this, right? And from that point to where you marked on there where your circumference is, that's your negative, your total negative circumference. So when you have that number, let's say it's six inches. <laughs> you didn't, Rachel, because I went live like four times. <laughs> so let's say it's six inches. And I'm sorry I'm in inches, not centimeters. Six inches would be a lot, but uh, not probably uh, surprising for anything in the compression realm, right? Which is usually used in like athletic apparel and things like that. So you're going to need to divide that by, I would divide it in half, which is three inches, right? And then you need to divide that in half again and put it on each of your front and your back. So that's one and a half inches here, one and a half inches here. Does that make sense? Because we're talking about a garment that has four places in order to reduce this circumference of the negative ease. So just remember, that whatever you do to this seam, you need to do it to the center back as well. And remember that it's happening on the other side of your body too. This, this is why when your seam allowance is off and you're sewing and you're like, well, I use three eighths inch seams, but it had five eighths inch. Well, you just made it a, an inch bigger 
or a half inch, wait, three eighths, five eighths, a quarter, quarter. You made it a half inch bigger. <laughs> you made it an inch bigger. Oh my God, don't listen to me. I'm just a dummy. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna just mark this on here, center front. All right, so now I have my side seam right here and we're gonna lay this on here and we're going to make it the same length there. All right, and so this is a good uh, opportunity right here to talk about your seam juncture here. So when you're approaching the side seam here with whatever style line you're doing on any pattern, um, and you're going to sew this to another seam, you need a nice smooth transition. So we usually you can make this a right angle and that's sufficient as long as the other one's a right angle as well. The other thing you can do just in case, like say that this came at a really crazy angle, like say my armhole went like this straight up right here. Like you wanted a camisole that's way, way out here, a really wide front neck and you wanted it way out here. And so it goes right up from there. What I would do is I would lay this on here. I would overlap it by the uh, seam allowance, right? So if there's three eighths on this piece, three eighths on this piece, that it equals three quarters of an inch. Here's my three quarters of an inch. I lay it on here and now I can go, okay, what kind of transition do I want here? Right? So I can go into this front seam here. And so we're going to, we're going to do a center back neck. I can use my ruler again. kind of connect this and get this nice smooth transition to the front. How's it going, Rachel? All right, and then look at that. There's our camisole, our back and our front. Mine obviously has a, a shaped side seam a little bit. And that's it. <laughs> So now if you want to make this how we were jokingly, you know, with the points in the front and the back, you know, um, you want the same front and back. Mine is not the same front and back. My back is a little bit different. It's not much though. I guess I could use this pattern for that, but I, I'm just not going to. Oh no, I'm so sorry, Rachel. You know what I learned about notifications with YouTube recently is that um, it doesn't matter if you've told YouTube, yes, I would like to receive notifications for this channel that I love. Uh, that, that doesn't matter if your phone, if you get your notifications on your phone or whatever device you're using and you have those suppressed, <laughs> then you won't get it. <laughs> and of course that's so obvious, but I was like, God dang it. It's slightly bowed. I'll line this up on the table to a grid line here. And yes, it slightly goes down. That's because of the transition that I'm going for here. What if, uh, if you, Sue, if you wanted uh, like a, a scooped back, you could, you know, go like this. There's a lot of things you can do, you know, like we could, we could really go down the rabbit hole. You know, you could do something like this, you know, a little like cool thing with a little piece of elastic going across and a little window right here and a straight thing. I mean, you could have a lot of fun with these. Um, what if you wanted a, uh, a racer back? Wait, let's see, where would our straps go? Yeah, you could do, you know, a racer back. Let's draw it. Let's see if my, my uh, <laughs> technical drawing skills, let's see here. What did I just do? I did this, this. Um, sorry, I started drawing the pattern pieces. There's the back, right? And then it comes to the front. So basically it would look like 
right? Here's your straps, and they would go down to a straight, whoops, ignore that. <laughs> so something like that. So you wanted a little, like a racer back thing. That's what this would be. Oh, really, Aussie? It's ridiculous. So um, I, I find it really helpful to do a little sketch sometimes to go, wait, what am I actually thinking here? <laughs> um, you know, if you wanted this little window, that could be something more along the lines of um, just something kind of cool. You don't have to have a little strap across, but you could. You could have a little strap across. That's not how, wait, that's not what that is. I did this. <laughs> right something like that and this is a window right here so this is just a piece of, of elastic going across and then the front you know same thing as usual and then the strap could come down like this so yeah I'm trying not to go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> All right, so um, do you guys have any uh, questions or something you want to accomplish or are you stuck anywhere? Um, or maybe you want some further clarification just in case you're gonna do this later. Please, no question is a bad question. Ask away. I'm going to cut mine out here. We're gonna do the shelf bra next. If you don't want the length of your pattern that you're using, you know, feel free to shorten it or lengthen it. You could even make it shaped if you wanted more of like a shirt tail hem. A shelf bra too is when you have this little piece of fabric that only comes down to about right here inside the camisole. And it's, it's separate from the camisole except it's attached at the top edge. And it's just an elastic, basically just a, a short version of your camisole that has elastic at the bottom that goes right under the chest. It's a built-in bra. How long the strap should be? Oh, that is like the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, well, when I, I haven't gotten there, so you, ha you are not asking a question that's been uh, asked yet. So at the beginning, I had this little shirt, right? And so right here, you can see, my, I have a pin, this is inside out, so the pin's on the other side. So right there is where my strap is. So we can measure from this point all the way to the back to determine that, and you're still gonna need to, to try it before you do your elastic. That is one thing. You should always check that because the elastic you buy will change stretchiness between brands and things like that. So when I, I have a video on my channel already, like from like two years ago where I sewed camisoles by, shoot, who was that? <laughs> uh, I think it was Love Notions, <laughs> sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, it's the Luna loungewear set. There's a, she has a camisole pattern. And I showed in the video how to use fold over elastic and um, self fabric, meaning just the actual fabric. The difference in how those two fit me is it's kind of shocking. Like the, um, I actually really like the self fabric and I really thought I'd like the fold over elastic, but I love how soft the, sh the regular fabric is. The regular fabric is so much stretchier than the elastic. Now the elastic is stretchy if I stretch it, but the, the fabric is just so much more gentle. It's, it's just nat more natural and it just sits on the body. Whereas the elastic, you're applying it stretched. And so it's 
cinching as it's being worn. It's a little different. So I'm gonna get to that point. Oh, hey, Ray. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> you got it? Okay, good. <laughs> Yeah, I, negative ease is great, but I don't feel like you need to do too much. I think, like, say you wanted to make this camisole not a knit. Oh, yeah, Allie. Yeah, any, this is the way I look at a lot of those things, is that there are ways to figure some of these things out without... Um, doing it like that, right? There, there are ways, but like, say I'm at, I'm at my job, I'm a pattern drafter, I'm, a, I'm at my job. I, I'm, I'm not currently employed anywhere, but let's say I'm, I'm sitting there at my desk in the design room. It depends on what design room you work on, what things you'll have available to you. I was really lucky that all the places I worked, we had factories at, on site. So there were things available to me. It's not like my sewing studio. It does not look like this in there. It's computers and drafting tables and, you know, lots of samples. If you're lucky, there's a sewing machine there. Um, if you're lucky that you're, you're able to borrow supplies from downstairs, you know? So the great thing about being a home sewer is you can be extremely um, obvious about it, right? You can go, this is the fabric I'm gonna use. I'm gonna mark how big I am on here. I'm gonna put it around me. Do I like the way this hangs on me? Do I want it to be tighter? Do I want it to be looser? You know, and then you can kind of assess that for each of your camisoles. If you want a different fitting camisole for different types of fabrics, trace this off a few times and then make it a little bigger or a little smaller for the different fabrics and then just label your patterns really well for that. Okay, wait, I was, gonna, I was going somewhere about the, um, arr, I interrupted myself. It was a good tangent, so don't you dare put that pug in the chat, Shem. <laughs> I can't remember where I was going with it, though. Let's see here. I know I want to do the strap length. Oh, we need to do the shelf bra. Was that what I interrupted? I don't think that's what I inter uh, interrupted myself for. All right, let's make, I need some space. My table's getting crowded my fabric here. I These are the fold over elastic, elastics I have on hand. They were super cheap. I, I don't really recommend these unless you really need to do this. You can tell just by looking at this elastic. Look at it. It doesn't even lay flat. Look, it wants to lay. <laughs> you gotta love it. This is what I do to see if it'll correct it. That corrected a lot of it. Yeah, that pug. <laughs> I was not distracted at all. Okay. This is all I have on hand, so this is what I'm gonna be using for one of mine. I imagine, these are the only colors I have too, so maybe I will do, I'll cut one out of this fabric and use the, that. It's not the most attractive, but you know. <laughs> I outed myself. All right, so we have our camisole. Here's our pattern that I do not need. Um, I'm gonna do a shelf bra. And so I need a little piece of paper. Do I have a piece cut out? No, not. I'm gonna cut a piece off. Okay. these in half, get my two pieces of paper. All right, I'm gonna trace off my top part of my camisole. Oh, I really cut it close there, didn't I? It's because the Sharpie is so fat. 
Um, I'm going to just really lightly trace my side seam there. I have a feeling I'm going to make it a little bigger. So the, the shelf bra only needs to secure at the top edge here. And then the perimeter and the, the side seam can sew to itself. And then the perimeter at the bottom, it's, it's separate from the camisole. And let's do our back. So if you only do the cam, the shelf bra in the uh, front of your camisole, which I, I, I have seen that before, it's, it's not going to be as good because you will have to anchor it at the side seam, which means that it can't, it's, it's become a, it becomes a flat thing. So if you don't have a very full bust, you could do this and get away with it. If you have a pretty full bust, you're going to probably want something that goes all the way around the body. Thankfully, most knit, you're going to have enough in uh, your fabric in order to, you're going to have like that, this exact amount left over of your yardage. So at least you can use it up and not let it sit there. This is my center back. All right. So before the stream today, but I'm just going to show you, I saw my pins here, that little point right here, right? I'm going to measure it down and under my bust, the fullest part here. All right. And I get nine and a half inches. And that is from this point right here, right? This point straight down. Now at the center front here, about right here. I have a camisole under there so I can actually feel it. I forgot about it. I'm wearing, actually wearing camisole. In the center front here, it's more like four and a half. Now, <laughs> we're going to hope that when we put both of these, let's see if we put these. Yeah, I didn't think so. So this one's here and this one's here, right? But we don't really need this one to be here. It can be longer. It's fine. But that's what I want. This is what I want. These shelf bras never work for me, so I'm kind of excited that maybe now I can have one that does. All right, so where's my ruler here? All right, so let's put that nine and a half in there. And you're going to want some seam allowance because we're going to put an elastic band around there. So don't forget that. So I still need to do that, but I'm going to make a square line at that point. Now, I, if I wanted a little less fabric, I could do, you know, a little less in the front here like this and then just kind of shape it like this and then maybe go up at the side seam. There's, there's no rules here. You can do whatever you want um, within reason and see what works best for you. And I'm also going to swing mine out a little bit right here. I'm going to give myself a little bit more fabric across the bust under there. We're going to cinch it up with the elastic anyway. As long as my bra is synced up when it gets to this top line here, we're fine. Okay. So I actually love the way this looks. This actually makes me think it might be comfortable for once. So let's start there. <laughs> I'm one of those people that when, uh, you know, I had to buy these, I would just cut them out. Uniboob isn't really the greatest thing. <laughs> when you live somewhere really hot and sweaty, you guys, this is like, this is not what you want to wear. You, you know, I think the world thinks like, oh, it would be so nice not to wear a bra when it's really hot, right? You, you, um, you can just get rid of this extra structured layer by wearing a, a camisole with a shelf bra. No, it's just too much touching everything. It's my whole thing with like wearing shorts under dresses, right? Skin on skin is just not, not good in the heat. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to now notice right here that I, I have a pretty much a right angle right here. You're going to want that because remember that whole seam transition. And then let, let, I'll give you a whole little spiel about seam transitions again, because I, I want you to understand why we do that. Stop that. Because if you don't do that, I'll show you what happens. I really need to take my recycling out. 
My poor parents got snowed in, you guys. Aloha. Welcome. <laughs> My mom was so unhappy about it. It just got worse over the weekend. I came in on Saturday. It was fine. But then it just got a little worse. And my parents have a, they got, but today it, the, it's, the sun is out for the first time. The snow is melting. There's tons of, tons of snow here. But I heard that the, the road was iced at the airport when I was going to drive up. And I was like, oh, that's not good. It was fine. So let me t staple this. All right. So this is our back. Okay. So now let's say you didn't do a right angle. Maybe you didn't even add this little extra here. You might not need that. So you stopped it like this, right? But you, maybe you did add this little shape because you're like, yeah, I want as less fabric as possible in these other places. So let's say that this is your actual seam line, right? The side seam here. If you sewed this to this back one, you're going to have a point here. So if this one back here goes straight across, right? You'd have a point right here. If that point is a transition that will work well for sewing and getting the elastic on, that's fine. But you do need to use this as a seam. So when you're sewing along, if you end up having a point that is so sharp, you can't really sew, you have to pivot right there. It's, it's gonna be kind of funky on you as well. And it also is probably too short and it's gonna pull right there. That seam's gonna be just too short right there. So you wanna soften it, you know, soften those junctures so that you have a nice transition when you sew this elastic on there. So that's why I say do these right angles. I love it when some of you tag me and they're like, I self-drafted this thing and I did all right angles. <laughs> You're afraid I'm going to come down on you. Okay, now back here, maybe, um, maybe I'll shorten this a little bit. I don't really need all this fabric back here, but it is going to give some stability to the bra, right? So let's um, put this on here and we're going to, so this is my line right here. I don't really like that little bump though. So let's, something like that. I kind of look at it. All right, make sure you have a right angle back here. You don't want to point. You're just going to chop it off at the sewing machine, so just chop it off now. I probably want to go out. No, I don't want to go out um, here. I'm just going to leave it as is. If maybe if I felt like I needed a little more in my circumference of my shelf bra, I might cheat a little and add to the side seam and swing it out a little bit just to kind of give another place to do it. You don't have a whole lot of options here since we don't have darts, we don't have gathers, we don't have any kind of um, options. We don't have seams, we don't have princess seams, right? So here's my shelf bra, which looks a little shorter than this one. So let's, let's true this up a little bit. I don't know where I went wrong, but We've noticed it now, so let's fix it. So we have a, and this right here, that point, because that's the seam line, that's where we need this to be. So let's get this better here. It's hard to do it on camera sometimes. Let's see. Now I can see better. There we go. My <laughs> really sloppy uh, Sharpie. There we go. All right, and then for this elastic measurement, you're going to measure exactly where you're placing this and that's gonna be your elastic measurement. I wouldn't do anything too tight. You can make this whatever you want, right? I have a sweater on, so. We'll take a little bit off. Let's start getting our, our piece list. Oh, I just lost my cap. Oh, there it is. I, I uh, use pattern cards a lot, which is usually like a uh, cover sheet and it shows all the things I need for that, 
product or that project, right? It'll show me the fabric I need, the, the how much elastic and stuff like that. When I self draft things, I usually just write it on the pattern pieces. So I'm gonna write this one on here. Center front, camisole. Actually, it should be camisole, center front bra, one. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a three quarter inch elastic. That'll work. Camisole, center front bra, one. Um, if you want notches, uh, you can notch at here at the neckline because that'll help you as you're lining it up to sew it to here. These are really short distances, so you most likely don't need it. And I don't recommend notches. I, I recommend as few notches as possible when you're dealing with knits because knits are just, they're just kind of fragile, you know? Uh, I will probably mark it when I cut this out because I like having those points for elastic distribution. So, all right, so let's measure our straps. Let's, let's come up with some number so that we know about how much elastic we need per camisole. So when we order our fabric and every time we order it, we know exactly how much we probably need. So when we sew this together, we're gonna, we're going to, let's see, how do we wanna do this? So you can do this edge first right here, stop here, and then do this edge as the strap that comes down. Yeah, that's how it goes, right? It's either that or you do this edge first, and then you do this edge, strap come down. <laughs> this is when you get into the mind bending part. I can't remember what I like to do. I feel like I have a preference and I can't think of what it is, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I do this first and I do the rest of it as one. That, that sounds about right. Okay, so let's measure. So for this one right here, I'm gonna measure and it's six inches. I'm just gonna do a t little tally list here so I don't have to remember. And then for our back, we need nine and five eighths. Oops. <laughs> 16. These are all half measurements. All right, so let's measure our strap. And then we'll, we'll do the uh, binding pattern piece as well. All right, so here's my little shirt. Is this the front? Here's the front right here. All right, so we're gonna look at, see this right here, this little pin here, right? And then let's, mark on here, on the back here, where we ended up going with, I should have done this earlier, our uh, back height here, because I know that this is a little longer, it's more like down here. So yeah, let's do this. Let's place this, because we went a little under the armhole, like that much, right? Right there, right there. So about right here, about three quarters of an inch down. And we're going to place this. I'm going to try and get this right on the fold here. Okay, so this is about where my back height is. I, and I think like when you, where the strap tacks down here is a very personal preference. Just like where the strap starts in the front, sometimes people feel like, oh, I feel like it's about to slip off my shoulders if it's too far out. And sometimes it, when it's too far in the center, it doesn't, it just doesn't 
sit right in the back, especially between this point and the front. So you may have to work on this. Uh, for now, I'm gonna place it like directly on top. So where this point is right here at the center back, that's where I'm gonna place it. So let me notch this. A little notch right here. This is our first prototype, so we may change where we want this, right? Okay, so that's where it's gonna go. And now we're gonna measure the length from here over the shoulder to that point. Just very, very straightforward, right? <clears throat> and this length may change because, like this is a very soft knit. Whoops, wrong end. I may want something a lot firmer so that I have more support. So that says 14 and a half. Here it is. Front to back. All right, so if I'm purchasing elastic, I need, well, do I wanna, yeah, 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 I do, do 30, 32 plus 12 is 44 plus 14. You need a lot, um, 44 plus 28, so. You guys are so quiet right now. <laughs> you guys make me sometimes think like, like the stream crashed, but it tells me it didn't, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is all half right here. So 20, 36 and a half times two is 72, 73 inches. So I need 73 inches of just the fold over elastic at the top, right? And then for the bra, I need 38 inches at three quarters of an inch wide. <laughs> You're trying to do the math, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about self-binding or self-fabric for the um, strap. I'm going to take all these pins out now first. <laughs> I think it's uh, either that or they're just like, whew, okay. <laughs> Too much. I get a little serious when I get into drafting too, so I don't think it's very entertaining. It's very, it's probably really boring to some people where I, I sit there and get <laughs> really into it. Okay. Oh, let's take out the pins off of me. I actually have to um, drive, I have to drive to Yuba City today, Shim. I have so many friends that are gonna be vending at Stitches West um, this coming week at in Sacramento. And someone purchased my old counter that I used in my booth. And I'm gonna go meet her in Yuba City and give it to her. <laughs> oh, thanks, Julie. You think I go on more tangents? Dang, I feel like I'm way more focused when I draft. It's all interest, it's, it's, it's all important stuff and it's all part of it, it's not even a tangent. Okay, make sure I get all my pins out here. None on me. All right, so if you want to do a self fabric binding, um, you are probably gonna want some seam allowance on here. I'll just use mine for both. I'm gonna use a pretty wide uh, self fabric and I, and I think because of that I won't take, I won't add the seam allowance to it. And then um, that width will make up for it. I may change my mind and want a different pattern for one with self fabric rather than fold over elastic. Fold over elastic is pretty narrow. All right, so for this piece here, 
personally, uh, well, do I want to do that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so the, the, the production person in me just wants to, to figure out roughly how much I need in length and then what width I want to cut it and that's it. And then I just cut a bunch and then I use it as I go. But let's be a little bit more intentional. I know from my front here that this is a six inch piece. So we're gonna want, let's put our bias on the back camisole. Okay, self binding. And this is gonna be cross cut, all right? Oh, cool, Shim. Yeah, what did they? What is? What did your sister do? Yeah, it's my friend Maria. Um, do you guys know a needle runs through it? She's an amazing sewer. She makes bags as well. She makes some of my chicken boots bags. She even makes. She's actually getting. She has a lot of my kits that no one else. No one else got. And I gave them to her. She's so good. Um, she's bringing double doubles of chicken boots, double doubles, and um, I don't know what else. I think she was trying to bring zip doubles, and I think Charm Keepers, Ooh, I don't remember. Um, but she does all kinds of stuff, all kinds of bags and stuff, so she'll be selling there at Stitches. Oh, that's awesome, Sher Amy. I was gonna say Sheridan. Um, there's actually a train that used to go from Sacramento to the stitches um, in, San, in San Francisco, in uh, um, Santa Clara. Your team lurk. <laughs> You're in the past too, Elaine, Elaine. <laughs> I can tell. All right, so uh, for the front piece, I think for this self fabric, I'm gonna want it to finish about 5 eighths of an inch wide. Doll clothes pattern, Liberty Jane for eating shell. Oh, okay, cool. That's really cool, Shem. She probably doesn't do stitches though. For so powerful. Cool. You're just catching up on chat. That's, that's funny. I haven't heard of so powerful. That's awesome. You did production sewing, I should dang. Python's oh my gosh, Elena. I have no idea what that means. Oh, I see, I see. So you're, oh, they have a nonprofit called So Powerful that makes purses for teenage girls. Oh, neat. That's really cool. Nose for, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, so they might be there. Yeah, they may, if they're doing bags, yeah. It's weird not to go to stitches. It's been a few years though. All right, so the way I like to sew this on is I'm gonna use my cover stitch. So we're gonna overlock it on, turn it to the inside and uh, cover stitch it down. If you don't want me to do that, tell me now if you have a preferred way, like if you're, but it, let's say you don't have a cover stitch, but you do have a serger, you can still do this. Um, you, can, you can just do a single row of stitching or a double row if you want, or a double needle if you have a twin needle. Um, you could also make a, you know, like your, like a crew neck t-shirt has a neck band. You can do that too, as far as your, the, the neckline of your camisole in the front and in the back, and then just make a strap that attaches. There's lots of options here. That's great, Rachel. Oh, interesting, Aisha. Okay, got it. I know exactly who that is now. Now that you've connected what their purpose is. Okay, I know so powerful. All right. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, YouTube chat is a really hard way to explain anything. And I think it limits you guys, doesn't it? So do you guys have any preferred ways you would like to finish this that you would rather me cover? Oh, 
Oh, you did, Elena, but that quilt turned out so amazing. It looked amazing. I love that pattern. Elena, does anyone deviate from the color scheme? Not that I want to, I just kind of want to see it in other ways. I, I think, I haven't looked at the hashtag yet. I woke up this morning and I was like, oh my gosh, today's the day the Cash Marette video goes live and I didn't prepare anything. <laughs> so I was doing all that this morning. Oh, that's really cool, Shem. That's really cool. Do you use fabric if you're wearing it alone? Um, I w would rather wear the camisole on its own with nothing over it if the straps are in fabric. Cause it's, it's just more comfortable and it looks more relaxed. It's not like as, as taut or, or snug, you know? I think that's a really good way to, good question, Julie. Because you're right, I do tend to wear the ones without anything over them if they don't have the fold over elastic. Oh, okay, Elena, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, okay, I'm gonna check out the, um, the hashtag. That's really cool. I love that quilt. Okay, I, Allie, that's fine. Um, because you don't have to have a cover stitch to do it. I'm going to overlock it on. And then I can sh tell you guys a way to do it without a cover stitch. Yeah, the Omega. Wait, did she post her Omega quilt too? I haven't. I didn't catch that. <laughs> You know what's funny is I was so excited that my phone was updating the other day. I was like, oh good, maybe this will fix my Mighty Networks thing because when I open Mighty Networks, it's always locked. Like it's it's frozen and I have to close it all out and open it again and it takes, and sometimes it never opens. And I was like, oh, this will fix it. No, you know, it doesn't do that now, but you know what it does? It does, it's not telling me there's any notifications. So I've had like no notifications at all. And I'm like, wow, there's just no activity. And then I open it and I'm like, oh, there's 14 notifications. So I have something new now. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, Elena. Don't they, are they announcing at QuiltCon this weekend? So maybe, well, that was last weekend. Oh, cool, Shem. <laughs> right, Rachel, exactly. <laughs> All right, so uh, if I'm gonna do five eighths as my kind of my finished, what I want is, so here's my five eighths finished width. All right, so this is five eighths. We need the amount to attach it to the garment. So that's your preference. I'm going to use a quarter inch, okay? And then we need the amount that's gonna turn to the other side. It's gonna turn to the other side. And really we only needed to go just past the seam there because we're gonna cover stitch right here. That's the easiest cover stitch I've ever done right there, right? So this right here, we'll make this, we'll say three quarters. It should be five eighths. All right, this should be five eighths, but we're gonna make it three quarters because we're gonna allow a little bit of fabric to turn under, right? So this total right here is one and five eighths, whoops, I can write, one and five eighths inch, all right? So there, our width of our binding that we're gonna cut, that's cross cut. You do not need to cut it on the bias when it's knit, all right? So it's one and five eighths wide. For the front, we want a 12 inch piece. And then we're going to want a long piece for the back that turns into the strap. So it right here is 30 and a half inches. We'll make it, um, we'll make it less. So we're going to make it about 29. Because it's it's going to your um, your elastic has a really good return, right? So when you stretch it, right, it goes back 
most likely it's going to go back to where it was, right? And it's constantly polling. So if, um, and in fact, we should make this measurement a little shorter right here, right? We're going to make this a little bit shorter. We're going to gently pull it on there as we apply it. So these are just measurements that are equal to the distance they're sewing to, but we're going to stretch the FOE as we apply it. So it's really not going to be this amount. But with the crosscut stuff, it doesn't have that kind of return, right? And the and it also doesn't have the, the elasticity of elastic. Oh, thanks for subscribing, becoming a channel member, bro. The burrow. Head to the burrow. <laughs> don't start me on quotes. Um, so we're going to take off a little bit because we don't really need it to just be our straps falling off of us. Most likely you're going to have to cut more of this off depending on your knit. So if you were using like this knit right here, this red that I'm going to use, it does not stretch very much. This is, um, I don't want to confuse you. That sleeve was cut on the bias and then it's like not worth talking about. <laughs> this doesn't stretch very much. This is about it. So this right here, if I were cutting cross cut out of that, I would probably leave it about the same length as what I need. If I was cutting cross cut out of this here, this is really stretchy, right? We want less, we want a shorter length because we want it to be a little bit taut. We, want, we don't want our top to fall off or our straps to fall off our shoulders. For something like this linen knit, this is like the wild, wild west, this stuff. It has a lot of stretch. It doesn't have a lot of return, and I think it's gonna stretch out over the course of a day. It's gonna feel really nice. So that's another one I'd probably decrease quite a bit. So there is no like one answer when you get into these kinds of things. You're gonna have to experiment. And when you do your strap, right, we're gonna make our front right here, apply our, our um, binding, whatever it is. And then we're gonna do our back, we're gonna go let me think about this. If I wanted this to be continuous, maybe I want to, oh yeah, 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 that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with the strap. I'm gonna sew the strap and then I'm, I'm going to sew the armhole and the back and then back up to, then we flip it, right? Then we're like this, then we continue, we go up and then we make our strap. When you make that strap, it's not attached to the camisole, so you have a little bit of play there. Then you can pin it to yourself and see how long you want to cut off. When you cut that amount off, save it so that you know, oh, if I'm ever using this fabric again, I know that I really don't need to cut this strap as long. Cross cut with knit means you're going to cut it across the width of the fabric or the side, the, the um, direction with the greatest amount of stretch, which most of the time with knits, it's across the fabric. There's no reason to cut it on the bias because that doesn't give you more stretch. It gives you less actually. So you can save some fabric and cut going across the cross grain. A lot of quilters use cross cut. I don't know why. Selvage to selvage, exactly. Selvage to selvage. All right. There's a lot of variables here. I'll probably refine some of the things that I've written down here. And um, I'm not going to cut these out here on camera. I'm going to cut them out off camera just because I don't think you need to see me cut a camisole. <laughs> it's like two pieces. I would love to show you. I will show you my little trick with cutting knits though. I have a, a couple little things about folding the fabric. Um, but I will let you know what I ended up doing when I cut mine out and when I decide what fabrics I'm going to use because thinking about like, okay, well, I really wanted to use this red and now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, I don't have enough fabric for binding. <laughs> so I'll have to figure out if I do or if I don't. I just don't have enough. All I have are these sleeves. <laughs> So maybe I do, but they're cut on the bias, which is funny. <laughs> so I'm gonna decide, I'm gonna do one out of this and I'm gonna do fold over elastic for sure. And then I have to decide which one I'm gonna do with the self fabric straps. 
I have white and white is terrible on camera. I can try this one here. Let's just like look at it real quick and see. This is the one I'll do the bra for. Do you think that floral will be weird as a bra underneath? I have some white I could put it. I could put under there. All right, let's see. If I put my, um, oh wait, I need to take out my staples. Take them all out right now. Okay. I mean, maybe I could get some cross-cut binding in here because if my front is that high up and my back is like up here, I have a little bit down here, but I don't think I have that much. <laughs> I don't think I have enough. So we'll see, I'll figure that out. I'm trying to use these fabrics, these things, these projects that I have. The blue wouldn't be very fun to um, use on the camera. What would I use for binding here? Hmm. How often would I use a lace camisole? <laughs> in porta potty green. <laughs> Let's see. And then I have red. Yeah, I'm, I'm really slim. I have like all these knits over here, but I just don't want to cut into those quite. I do have red. Oh, 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 I have this one idea, you guys. So let's say you have enough fabric that you can only do the front of your camisole, okay? Or one side of your camisole. What if you did the, uh, the reversible, interchangeable, what word did we come up with? Um, shoot, you guys had a, good, a couple good ones. Well, anyway, you could do the front in one color and the back in the other color. You'd have like two camisoles in one. So I was thinking, oh, if I had some, because this isn't enough to do a whole camisole. I don't think. Is it? Maybe it is. Ooh, that could be good. Ooh, I don't know though. I'm a little wider than this piece here. So maybe that's an option. But you could do a black one on the front and a white one in the back. If you're always just wearing it under things like sweaters, no one would ever know. <laughs> I love that. I have all this too. I have a ton of this red. Oh my God, you guys have so much of this red. So I have that. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Lazy Susan Yamazal. <laughs> That's exactly it. We're talking about Lazy Susan rotation. Rotating, rotating is the term we want. Rotating, we have a rotating camisole. <laughs> I feel like there's another term though. Anyway, we'll figure that out. I'll let you know what I end up settling on. We're gonna be cutting and, or I'm gonna be sewing tomorrow. Maybe I should cut tomorrow and then sew on Saturday, then I'd have a project. But I like the idea of having the sewing circle on Saturday, so we're gonna do that too. And if you're still sewing on Saturday, your camisoles, I can be there to help too. A full lining and a contrast color, yeah. Oh, I know what I was, I was starting to talk about earlier. I don't really have time to go into it now, but I was going to tell you about if you want to do your camisole, not in knit, but you want to do it in woven. So we'll have to, we'll have to uh, put that um, for another day because I know there's going to be people that would like to do a woven style. Yeah, the carousel camisole. I like that. <laughs> it's a coffin cami. <laughs> That's actually the best one. But it's not, Nancy, it's not, it rotates. <laughs> In case you all don't know what this term is, it's when you make a garment or you, this is very common in sweaters, in sweater knitting. They'll put all of the cool embellishments on the front, like all the cabling and all the lace work and the back is just solid, right? And so my, my, uh, I used to know someone who went to a, a knitting circle and they were like, 
what, you knit a coffin sweater? Basically, so it just looks good, you know, on the, in the, from the front. <laughs> Imagine being married in a camisole. <laughs> it's a coffin camisole. I mean, you know, it can be hot. <laughs> so that's where that term comes from. Yeah, coffin sweaters are so boring. So uh, we're talking about the, the antithesis to that, Nancy. We're talking about a rotating camisole, a carousel camisole. <laughs> we don't do coffin things around here. <laughs> Yeah, the contrast under there, I don't think I have something right now, though. I have a lot of knits right now. I just, uh, trying to, to use the things that I need to use. I think it's perfect for so frugal, too. The <laughs> exorcist, my goodness. These names are really funny. They're very colorful. Colorful or rotating? or carousel. None of these would look good on camera. This one, I'm not sure what I want to do with yet. These are sample fabrics. I can use whatever, like this, I can probably um, try a sample out of it. I do have this weird stuff. And this I'm saving. These are all sweaters. This is athletic. That's it. I have a lot of knits. But none of them will work. This redwood, if I need a red camisole. I might use this because then I could use the uh, crosscut binding on it. So maybe that's a good choice for that. Yeah, anyway, I'll have something for you tomorrow. I had to get here early and cut it out though. So you can sew and I'll have to set up my machines too because I got to get going and deliver this thing. I uh, did not realize that was happening on a week I was streaming. Put all my stuff away. Always clean up, right? <laughs> yeah, the carousel cami. Well, coffin cami worked too, Nancy. <laughs> the exercise. Oh, why? It does spin, doesn't it? <laughs> you guys are such weirdos. I love it. All right. Well, um, I will be here tomorrow cutting or sewing, actually. I probably will, maybe, we'll see, Ray. Maybe I'll cut one, but I don't really think, maybe except for the cut cross cut, I'll cut that maybe on camera. I'm trying to do a lot tomorrow already. I think the sewing, the sewing's gonna go really fast. The thing is you have two side seams, that's it. Two side seams and then you just have the finishing and we'll talk mostly about finishing the camisole. Yay! Congratulations, Aisha. That'll be fun. Um, yeah. That's it. That's all I have for you today. <laughs> all right. So today starts so frugal 23. Uh, let me pull up. Um, yeah, here we go. Let me pull this up for you because here we go. This is it right here. No, no, don't start playing. Please don't start playing. Don't start playing. There we go. I got, I got a video for you. Send you your way to send you over to the Yorkshire sewing gal. She has her so frugal. Oh my God. Ads. Free sewing pattern inspiration is her title for her video. And there's links in the description and there's a link to the free skirt pattern I was telling you guys about the fruit, the Florence skirt um, and the codes in her chat or her in her description as well. So you can check that out if you're doing so frugal and the challenge is all, all it is is use a free pattern or draft one use fabric from your stash so you're not buying anything and you just need to sew it in march that's it post it on march 31st if you like so yeah absolutely all right you guys thanks for coming i really appreciate it and i will see you tomorrow same time same place and uh get your camisoles all cut out and we'll sew them together